So um, I wanted we wanted to present a VS Code, which is which is called an integrity development environment. I uh, will go through why it's called that uh, during the tra the training. It's I mean it's more than just a simple uh, text editor. And the reason we're presenting this one is simply because four members of the CMS team are now using it. So we just thought, well, may as well show to you what, uh, what we're using and maybe you'll find that it might be useful to you as well. Okay. Um, so here is what I will present to you. Um, We'll have, a, we'll have a quick overview of how to install VS Code and a few bits of information. Once we're in VS Code, I want to just go through a bit explaining the VS Code window, um, how it works with extensions, uh, the connection to Gaddy, because that's one of the reasons we use VS Code is it connects to Gaddy very well and very easily. And then uh, text editing features, including um, some features of a uh, card, um, search and file comparisons, Git features, there's a terminal in VS Code as well, so I'll show you how to work with the terminal, and some uh, features more specific to Python or like other languages that are many Python. Okay, so get started. First thing is how to get VS Code. Um, it has a website, no more. Um, as you can see, it exists for Mac, Windows, Linux. You just download whatever package and follow the instructions. That's um, pretty straightforward. You need to install it on your own machine, uh, whether you want just to connect to Gandhi or not, you just need it on your own machine for that. And because I don't want to spend ages looking at that, um, we've put a bit of a blurb on our wiki about VS Code that goes a bit of installation, how to do it. Um, it also will look at connecting to another server. So in this case, for example, Gaddy, and to more details, especially it has some details for Windows users. Uh, because it was very well for Linux and Mac because I get is a Linux uh, machine as well, but Windows needs a bit more um, details. And then some ideas of extensions to install. I'll explain to you what the extensions are, but just give you some ideas here. Um, if you want. Okay, so let's see about VS Code itself and what happens when you open it. So if you open it, you will get something. So it's something like this. That's a welcome uh, page editor, if you think of it. OK, so what does it look like? It has some shortcuts here. Uh, you can reopen recent projects uh, easily. And it tells you, you see, just use this when you're on Getty. Everything's on Getty, always work on Getty only, pretty much. But also, it has some help shortcuts um, that are handy. So you can read this page each time you open, if you go to File and a New Window, each time you open a new window in VS Code, it will reopen this, so you can access this very easily. It has some ID. It gives you some ideas for customization, for example, color theme, if you want to choose your own colors. Well. Uh, and it has a sections to learn a few things, which we'll go through quickly here. So first of all, it has what is called a common palette, which in Mac is shift common P. Um, if, you, if you click here, it opens something at the top. And this is all the list of comments that are available here, for example, you see. So you can just tap, um, you can start to to type and then it will uh, give you the comments with what's up, what's okay. 
So this is easy if, if you want to remember, if you don't remember how to access a command, you just do command P and start tapping what the command should be. Okay, the interface overview, we'll use that to go through. Um, so you see it tells you, you can find and run all commands with the command palette here. Okay, here on the left of the window, I, you have a few icons. So the first one is a file explorer. Uh, we'll look through it a bit later. The second uh, magnifying glass is a search uh, feature. We'll also look through it in more details. You have source code management. So VS Code will help you to do your, um, will work with Git. So you can do, you can manage all your code with uh, Git or files with Git easily from a VS Code. Uh, it has a launch and debug um, feature, which you may or may not use depending what language you use. And finally, it has a manage extensions one, uh, which will go through soon. And the last one I have here is not part of the default ones. It comes from an extension, and that's why there's not something coming up there. And you can see that at the bottom, there are all the things. Oops, the window is not yet. All right. OK. So you here, it says view errors and warnings. Again, we'll see when we look at the file, what, how it works. As I said, you have a terminal. So it gives you how to toggle the terminal is control and the thing there. No, no, it's cool. Whatever. And you can have notifications from the. So yeah. So this is a, a view of the of the window. Um, this icon is your account. You know, um, if you have an account, you don't need to have an account, so you don't have to. And that as settings uh, one, um, it has access to a few different things. You can quickly look at all the keyboard sh shortcuts. Key maps are uh, keyboard shortcuts, but from different text editors. So if you want the same keyboard shortcuts as Vim, for example, or, or uh, any other ones that you know, Emacs or whatever, you can change it there. Uh, you can change the color theme here. So OK, that's how you OK. So that's that's the welcome window. So what happens um, if I want to open something? I can, oh no, that's not what I want to do. Okay, let's go to the extensions first. So VS Code comes with a few things by default, but it really comes to life when you put extensions on it. So I have one installed right now, which is remote development. Remote development is the extension you will need to install so that you can connect to Gaddy, for example, or any other remote server you may want to. When you install remote development, it will install all the other remote ones that you see here at the same time. So yes. Um, and as you see, locally, that's the only thing I have installed because I said I'm mainly work uh, on the server. But if you work a lot with Python and work locally, you may want an extension for Python. And so you just search for Python. And usually the first one is the one you want. You see this one is developed by Microsoft. It has been downloaded a lot of times. So it's relatively secure to install it. And you can just click on install, and it will install it and probably ask you to reload and then and you have a blurb there that tells you why you should install it and what it does for you. Uh, I let you go through that uh, when you want to. Okay. So I've installed remote development. What does it give me? It gives me this little icon there at the bottom left. And when I click on it, I have a 
menu here that allows me to connect to, to a server. So what I want is connect current window to host. Okay. On my computer, I have set up SSH keys and my config file for SSH. So um, VS Code will use that to find names of hosts that I have configured and I might want to connect to. If you haven't done that, you can simply enter your username at host and it will ask you your password, or you might want to go to our SSH training and learn how to set up your uh, SSH keys and config file. Anyway, so whichever way you just put your. So here I clicked on Gadi and it just went and thought. And here you see at the bottom, it tells me um, on Gadi. So now if I want to go and open something, it gives me that. And that's my home folder on Gadi. You see, that's Regin Home, the old one. And so on. And I can go anywhere on Gadia. I can go on my Swatch, on my data, anywhere. Okay. So if I open something, I can stop typing and you see it, it follows through. And I can just I can just start typing. And when I see it's blue there, if it's what I want, I just press enter and it shows it. Uh, and I can just use the arrows as well. And I can open this one, for example, and here. So because it's an ID and not just a text editor, it is a lot better to work in terms of folders than far by far. And we'll go through a lot of features that you understand why it is. And when you wonder what order to open is pretty much like a project, something that have connections between each other, you know. So here it's a it's a code, it's cable um, coupled to wolf, so it has lots of different things in it. And I can access and that's the file editor icon there. So uh, file explorer, so I can just go through the directories and go and find the file and open it. Okay. okay. Any questions so far? on how it works. No? Okay, so I'll change window because I wanted to show you something specific. So this is again a version of um, Cable Coupled to Wolf. I have opened a specific uh, file. It's called cabledriftmod.f90. It's there. Okay. And uh, maybe I will show you something else as well. So now that I'm connected to Gadi, if I look at what extensions are installed, I have a lot more installed. I have the local installs that are only the remote development. And on Gadi, I have installed quite a few other ones. Okay, I have installed some for Fortran, Python, Git, um, C, C++, and Bash, you know. So all these extensions with which have a name of a programming language will give you more um, more features for this language. And that's what we're going to see right now for Fortran. Um, but the same cannot be done for Python, for example, or R or C or C++ or Java or whatever you want. OK, so the first thing you notice is these colors. <laughs> We'll close this so it will be easier to see. You know, everything is in color. I have my comments in green. Um, my some some of the names of the language in uh, blue. Um, my module names in whatever it is, aqua, etc. Okay. Okay. So what can I do there? Okay. So if I go there, or maybe there. Okay, let's say yo, here I have, I'm using a module that's there, and I want to know what is this module. I'm sure right now what you're doing is that you either remember where this module is or you have to find out where this module is. Um, in VS Code, if you right click, you get a menu, and the first option is go to definition. If I click on it, 
it will open the file that contains the definition of this module. So I don't need to know where it is and it gives me the path there. That's so what I mean. So it's good, but yeah. So that's one thing. You can go quickly from one to the other. It works with module files. It works with um, functions. So if I do that, go to definition, it will open where I have the definition of this one, just where it is. Uh, the other thing it, work, it does with function, if I just hover over the name, it would give me a small tooltip with the definition of the function that gives me the number of arguments and the type of the arguments. So this way I don't have to remember every time, which is handy. Uh, I can also click right and I can just pick at the definition, for example. It gives me just a bit more. I can look through. It doesn't open the, you know, it doesn't open the file, but I can still go through and have a look through it quickly. Um, okay, you can have all the things. You can go to implementations or references. So it's all the all the places where it is called, uh, where this function is called. So that, that's one thing you can do. Like it's the cross reference of things. It's very nice. Other things you can do. Uh, let me find a place that is handy to do that. Here, yeah, for example, here I have a, a variable that called met that contains a lot of different things. And let's say I want to move all of the dead ones, all of these. Um, no, sorry, that's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> so here, I, I have a variable that's called log, uh, log D or Y. Log day of the year, and let's say I want to change this variable name to log day of year two or whatever. I can right click, rename symbol, I change the name here, and it has changed here, but it has changed everywhere in the code as well, uh, where it's pertinent to change it. So it will only change it within the, the function and not within the whole file, for example. And obviously, you can undo with command Z um, pretty easily. The other thing you can do is you can very easily work with lines. Uh, so, for example, let's say I want to add another uh, variables under the met percent thing. I could type met percent, whatever, but the spaces are. Um, I can also, with option shift, Simply copy the line up or down, um, control shift and the arrows up or down. And this way I can just simply change this name and whatever I want. And then that's easy. Uh, the other thing you can do, you can select with the keyboard, which is pretty easy. Uh, you can also have, you can edit on multiple lines. You can simply, if you want, you can simply press Option or Alt and then click, and then it will put. And you see, I, oh, I have several uh, cursors now, so I can change all of those at the, same at the same time, for example. Um, I can I can do I can select several lines in a row with option shift the same thing so I just click once um, yeah you can if you select several lines you can copy paste those up and down and this, uh, with option shift um, so it's easy to work with lines like this. And the last thing I wanted to show you, maybe on this, is if I stop typing, you see, if I stop typing, it will come up with suggestions of what I want 
to type. So it will prevent me from mistyping something, a variable name or anything. And is they're not by is they're not necessary by um by alphabetical order. Uh, it tries to put the most of most likely one at the top. Um, but yeah. Not always the top one, but yeah. Okay. Um, sorry. So, yeah. Hey, uh, can I ask a question? Yes. So, first of all, thank you so much for uh, this very useful uh, session. Uh, so, unfortunately, I have to leave in two minutes. So, okay. I will ask a question which is not exactly on on this um, on the yeah. last thing you've been showing. So, my thing is. Uh, uh, while what you just showed worked perfectly for this kind of code like a model, uh, when we do uh, an, when do when we, when we when we do data analysis, we often want to you know to uh, try things quite quickly, uh, and we want uh, an interaction interactive um, environment like the one from that like uh, like the one from Python example. Yeah. So, so my yeah, yeah my my question is when I use Python. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes I want to check the sites of, 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 of an array. I want to do things that, uh, so basically, is there any way to have uh, an active uh, kernel uh, while, you are, while you are coding? So there are two ways. Um, I was going to present that at the end, but I'm just going to do it quickly now and maybe more at the end. First, VS Code can support uh, Python notebooks, they look like yes. this. And what is good is that you can export it to a Python script. Um, I forgot the name, I don't know what is going to say, but anyway. Uh, what is good about it compared to our Python, to Jupyter notebook is that it has very little uh, comments and spaces. So it looks like a pretty good Python script. Uh, only, it only has these, um, these lines uh, in addition. And also this is a Python script. It still understands it as cells because of those lines. So you can run them bit by bit still. Uh, the, the other thing uh, you wanted to know maybe here is something I, this is just, this is just a Python script. You know what it does yeah. functions whatever um i can quickly transform it in a kind of a notebook by putting these lines and then i create cells and then i can do my imports first and we oh. run you know connecting to jupyter kernels and whatever things we run and stuff like that okay make sense yes yes it does it does yeah it look magic and once i do that i can um you know, start defining variables. And I run this and it just runs the cell. The cell. Yeah. So the other thing you can do is run it in a debugger. So yes, that'll exactly. let you step line by line through your script and see any variable contents, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I think, the little arrow key over to the left with a bug on it. Should run it in a debugger. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, or uh, I could have my file open, like a, a, a not a notebook uh, script, but just a file with my code. And then I can have the, uh, at the same time, I can have a notebook open. And so the thing is that usually I select a, I select a, a piece of code in the script, and then would be nice. But I don't know if they have, if if I can, I don't know. Uh, uh, push. I mean, I don't know if I can run in the in the in notebook without doing copy and paste. Probably I have to do copy and paste, right? I have to take the the piece from my script and put in notebook and test in the notebook. 
Yeah, well, here, here you can develop as if you were in a notebook. But with with just being a, a normal Python uh, file, and then so you can access all the variables one by yeah. one, and and you don't have to copy paste, and you yeah. can even just save it like that as a Python script. It will be learned. It will be, will be understood that for Python as a Python script uh, because it only has comments added to it that are uh, pretty simple. So that this way you don't have to have yeah. copy paste between files. But yes, it also was use trying to use the debuggers is also um, it's also a way to do it. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, unfortunately, I have to leave uh, because I had another commitment. But uh, yeah. thank you so much and uh, uh, and uh, uh, goodbye to everybody uh, connected to the section. Okay, okay, thank you. No worries. Okay, so. Uh, sorry, let's go back to where we were. Were there any questions on file editing, things like that, that you wanted to know? Um, no? Yes, I think you showed that, that you can rename a variable and it renames it automatically everywhere in the code. Um, my question would be, Suppose you have uh, subroutines in another files or functions in another files, are they going to be renamed as well, or will no. you only rename the variable inside that that particular file? It's inside that particular subroutine in that file. But the thing is that it won't change everywhere in the file. So if you have two subroutines which have the same vari variable name, but it's not the same variable, you know, like it's 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 it's, it's they're completely independent. It will rename in one subroutine, but not in the other. Does it make sense? It will, it will only rename within the scope where, the, where you are. So you might be able to rename like a function and it gets applied globally, or that might need a plugin or something. If I rename this one, Here it takes time because it's trying to find everywhere where it applies. And then if you rename a function, it will try to rename it everywhere, the definition and every implementation of it. So it tells you, you see, suddenly it has opened a lot of files. It tells me it has been some differences. And you see this one was cut clock, uh, all local time is not cut clock of time too, and so on. And it was using this, okay, this one is not the same one, but it gets. Okay, whereas if I rename only a variable, it will rename only this variable within the scope in which I am. So here I'm in the subroutine cable to met. It will only be renamed within cable to met and not anywhere else because it's a local variable. Is that? Yeah, okay, I see. Um, I see. Just, just to make sure I understand. So, for example, if you rename the um, the function you call there, the calculate calc local time two, yeah. uh, will it look for files only in the same directory, or also no? Like, no. will it will it go so back to uh, these two? These two are not in the same directory, and they have been renamed as well. So all right, maybe, I see. Thank you. Maybe if you show the browser view. Yeah. So they are they are part of the same uh, new wolf project, um, but some are in Kibble 2.3.4, and the other ones are in Kibble. And actually, those those are in Kibble 2.3.4 shouldn't be renamed, but it's too too weird a, a logic for the obvious got to know that. So that's why it gives you the possibility of. It tells you what has changed, and you can go through and see which one you want to keep or not. OK. All right, pretty impressive. Thank you. Sorry, Claire. I'd just like to, to have a more uh, detailed insight about this. Uh, yeah. So just like the, the rename uh, symbol, uh, I guess, uh, function yeah. uh, renames every occurrency, both when it gets used and it, when it gets defined, right? Yes. All right. Okay, good. And 
And the difference between rename symbol and change all occurrences, which is the, the, the option right below uh, when you right click. I've, I've, I haven't tried change all oh, occurrences. Okay. I don't know if you just, um, I believe change all occurrences might be, so you will have to check, but I would believe that rename symbol is, as I said, it will look for uh, the scope. So it will change all, a local variable will only be changed within a subroutine. Mm -hmm. Whereas we name all occurrences might be whatever the scope, everywhere, everything that anything that is called this, it will be changed. Yeah, probably. I don't know, but probably in the same file at this point. But I don't know. Okay. Anyway, I'll check that probably. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I'm doing. Um, okay, the last thing maybe people will want to know is it's possible to just have a snippets of code. So if I start typing if, here I have two things. I can have if on the single line or if then. If I just click if single line to, to give me if and ready to type the condition. I, and if I do, if sorry, if there, it just write me if then. So um, it's kind of nice. It's a bit faster to write things. Um, the what else? Um, I think someone. Um, I don't know if it. I forgot who was it. Someone the other day was looking for a code code folding. So the VS Code we do code. Folding, but it depends on the on the indentation of the code. So in my Fortran code, it doesn't work that well because I see I have a lot of comments that come back to the start of the line. So if I just fold this, it will just fold the subroutine line, which is not very useful. Uh, and I can't just fold the whole subroutine because of those comments. Uh, but if you have a, a code that is well indented and all the comments are indented with the code, then it was very well to fold. Um, so here, you know, you can fold the line there. Um, don't know if I have a loop. So you see, for example, this if statement could be folded if there was not this. So if I just um, do this and I do that, I fold in my if statement is not there anymore. I can concentrate on the rest of the code um, and I can just. Okay. Um, I think that's about it about text editing. Is there any other features you know or want or anything like that? If you were wondering if it got Let's it. quickly show the debugger. If you, maybe I'll switch over to my screen. Yeah, maybe because I, I don't think I've, uh, I've, I mostly use VS Code with Fortran. So uh, if you want, maybe we can, we look at the debugger uh, at the end because I'm going to do Python at the end. It will oh. be a bit easier. Okay. So this was for uh, the files. The other thing to look at, I wanted to look is it connects to, oh no, the interesting thing is the search. Okay. If you do command F, you will have a fine Thing, and this will search within the open um, file. If you go here, you can do a search and it will look through the whole project or you can just restrict it to uh, something. So here you see I've restricted it to my cable uh, directory and it's works a bit like grep if you know grep in Linux. And the good thing is that you can fold by file. So you can see the differences file by file. You can click on each line and it opens at the line you want. Uh, you can open in editor and look through like that in the files. 
Um, if you change something here, um, it will disappear here. It's not so that this is dynamic. Um, it changes with what you're doing. Okay. So we have just realized I need to accelerate a little bit. Oh, yes. So this, uh, this I forgot how they call it. Uh, maybe the, it's a way to jump through the code a bit faster. Uh, so here you see I'm here when it's gray. If I want to go there, I just click on it and it opens where it is and I can jump uh, through the code like that. And the other thing I can do with this, it works better if I do a comparison. So if I select for compare and then I open the same one here, uh, compare with selected, to open a window with comparison, you see there are differences. Uh, red is what was is in one version, the red, red green is in another version. Actually, there's a bit too many. But you see there are a lot of things here. I can jump to uh, one by clicking on them and stuff like that. Okay. So it, it, it's a, the difference. One is, is the comparison one is quite good actually if you have to compare files together. Sorry, how did you do this difference? Okay, so I'll take a, a, an easier file. I you right click, select for compare on the or, first one, and then you go to the second one and you do compare with selected. Uh, right okay, click, thank compare you. to selected. Okay, the other feature I wanted to show you is it connects to uh, Git or or the um, uh, version control. So these are files that have been changed and not committed yet. Uh, you can click on it. It will show you what has changed in the last commit. You click on the plus and it will stage for commits. Um, and then you can put the message here and then commit. Um, you have several options for commit and stuff like that. The thing also is it connects to a remote. So if you have a if you have your code on a remote like GitHub or Bitbucket, it will connect to it and it can tell you whether there are changes you want to bring. Or here you see I have 11 commits locally that are not pushed yet to the remote. So that's one thing. Um, so this is good for quick Git. What I like as well because some of my projects can be difficult, is a Git graph extension um, because it gives you a graphic interface of all the history of your, uh, of your file. So you can see your different branches, how they are related to each other and everything. So you can see I'm on the new cable branch. I have some uncommitted changes. That's the one on the remote. If I click on a commit, I can see what was changed during this commit uh, easily. I can right click on a commit and it gives me options um, from any commit, which is pretty good. Like create a branch from a commit. I don't know what this one, for example, can create a branch there quite easily. Okay. Okay, so that, the, that was it. The other thing maybe to discuss was the uh, terminal. If I do control and the thing under the escape key, I open the terminal, it will open directly within the directory I open, you know, it's new wolf and new wolf. Uh, that's a terminal on Gadi, it knows all the Gadi. Um, Functions so I can do a QSU run build to run the compilation right from there. Um, that's pretty good. Okay. I think that's it for that. Any other questions right now? Oh, sorry, I'm trying to accelerate a little bit. Okay, so we'll we'll move to Python because you might doing more Python than Fortran, I don't know. Um, the things to I wanted to go through with Python, with Python, here it's on Gaddy. You can choose which 
um, percent run. So you see it's an analysis three, so that the outcome environment, it will connect to it because I'm already in a problem. And if you click on it, you have a list of all of them. You can choose the person and interpreter you want there. Um, the other thing you can run like this if you want. The crash. You see, it goes get the right environment and it crashes. Um, and if you see when I look at the path like that, it's it gets underlined. And if I right click on it, no, sorry, if I just come and click on it, it will open the file um, at the at the line of the error. So if you have a test, so this one might not be very interesting, but uh, this one it tells me it's uh, this line of my code that has an error. In this case, it has no file to open, but um, anyway. So, yeah. Okay, and um, as I said before, you can uh, transform, you can open a cell, like a notebook cell, right, right in your Python code. So if you want to try out something, you can just try it out right away like this, very quickly without having another file open anything like that. The other thing I wanted to show you, but I can do that for example. Uh, okay. um, you see the tilde that that means there's an error and it will write to you oh, there's an error and it says a uh, module X array has no open name and data set member. Um, okay, so that's a pretty easy one. It doesn't work necessarily that way for Fortran because it tends not to find the modules. But um, I can show you quickly an example with the Python notebook before we go to the to the debugger. So you can do Python notebooks. I I mean. I don't know why you wouldn't use Jupyter, but sometimes you might want to uh, do it from VS Code. It works. It just opens a file and takes a bit of time and we uh, give it to you like that. And you see the output is there in line with the, with the cells and so on. And it works just the same as a normal cell. You can do shift, shift return to run the cell. You can press E to run the cell. You can stop, you can whatever. OK. Uh, Scott, do you want to show the debugger? Yeah, sure. I'll stop sharing. Here we go. So here I'm, I've just got like a Python script. Um, just normal. So there's a run button up here where it will run the Python file. So you can see the output in the terminal. Here, I'm just printing out a value from a data frame. Um, and then you can, on the right here, it'll show a little red dot. You can click one, click a line there, and that's gonna be where you wanna stop in your debugger. And we can go to run and debug. And we'll debug the currently active Python file. That should start us up. So this will allow us to see the values of any variables, go through a function and um, see what's happening if we're, if we're finding some sort of error. Load. I'm just going to queue up some stuff here. So we're currently, it's run the function up to this line. We can go to debug console. And this is basically IPython with all of the variables that are available up to this point. So we can say, we can look at what cat is and that just prints, us, prints out the values like they are in IPython. 
Um, the other thing I was going to do was set up a function. Uh, if it was. So we can step through lines. There's a step over means go down to the next line. Step into means if there's a function, it'll go into that function. So if I just continue over. Um, not sure where we are at the moment. I need to restart it. Possibly just because I edited that file. Let's say there was some error within this function. Uh, we could go down into that function and look through what the variables were when we had that error. So there we go. So step into a function. So now we're in my function. I could say, see what the arguments currently are. So I can either go down into the console or it also has any variables here. So this is what I was using to call the function. And I can keep stepping into and stepping into till I get to whatever's happening, having an error and see what all of the um, variables are. Um, you can like modify variables as well, um, but that's probably going to end up confusing when the values are modified in your debug session that aren't in your actual program. So generally what I do is just uh, look at what's happening using this. And we can stop and restart it as we need to. Okay, thank you, Scott. Is there any questions? I know the end has been a bit quick, maybe. I have a question about the kind of debugging process. Uh, so I know in Python it's pretty easy because you have a kernel and it's a pre-compiled language, so it can be used that way. But what about Fortune? Like if we want to debug any Fortune code, uh, what is the best uh, option for us to do so, to do it in a, in a more moderately quick way, let's say? So there's a program on at NCI called DDT. It's in the ARM Forge uh, module. Um, it basically works just like I've showed you for the Python thing, only for Fortran. It's just a separate program. Okay. Um, sorry, can you repeat me like the where, where I can find it? So it's, it's in the ARM Forge module and its right. program is called DDT. Yeah. I'll just type it into chat. All right, thank you. Okay, for Maxim to open the terminal, it's control and the like the apostrophe, but under the escape um, button. The back catastrophe. So yeah, I can't answer the chat directly from the chat because of this system. So. Okay. Is there any other questions? I think in one example, you showed that you could select several several times the variable met from the Fortran code you had. Uh, how did you make sure you selected the right number of lines you wanted? Okay, so I can share my screen again, I think. Uh, 
Um, no. Uh, sorry, this is not the best system. Uh, So if I'm here, if I want to select, if I want to select uh, lines one by one, I just press option and click wherever I want. It doesn't have to be a line, by the way, you can go and select here and whatever, and you see it, it just goes around. Uh, if you want to select several lines in a row, you just go to the first place you want to select, you press um, option and shift and you click where you want to go and then go it selects all the ones in between is that what you were asking yes thank you very much and if you want to select some lines you can do shift and the arrows up and down i mean you can do it with the with the mouse too we just you prefer to do it with the... And just to let you know, for all the keyboard shortcuts, I haven't changed them, so they're all the default ones. You can have all the shortcuts there from the... From there. And you can change them. You can see you have the editing, you can click on edit and you press the desired key combination and you can change. And there's also a not there. There's also a cheat. Yeah, no. Do you see the new window? No, you don't see the new window. On the welcome, on the welcome window, when you open a new window, uh, there is under the help session, there is something called printable keyboard cheat sheet. So you can have all the um, default. Uh, keyboard shortcuts this way. Uh, well, not all of them, but a lot of them this way. Any other questions? No? Did we finish with the chat? Yeah. Okay. Well, then thank you for coming. Is that it? I hope you, I hope it gives you, um, I hope you're, you're going to live and, and download VS Code and get started on it <laughs> and that it will be helpful for you. But um, yeah, just let us know um, and see you. So that's the last session of training for this year. Uh, we'll start again probably March next year, something like that. So just let us know in between if you have any ideas of training you want to do, because we're going to use that time probably to prepare a bit of training for next year. So yes, that's a good time to let us know. Thank you.